It's season two of Ag and Culture. And of course, we are talking culture. Tune in for great guests and conversation, breaking down all things agriculture. Watch us on our YouTube channel, MS Footprint Farms, and on Facebook at Footprint Farms. Every Tuesday, 9 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Eastern, and 7 a.m. on the West. Proudly sponsored by Heifer USA. Good morning, and welcome to our new show, Ag Plus Culture. I'm your host, Dr. Cindy Ayers Elliott. Our show, Ag Plus Culture, will explore all things agriculture, specifically how it affects communities, farmers, and ranchers of color. We will have local and national experts from around the country to discuss everything agriculture, from how to plant a garden to how to grow a tree in your backyard, understanding the rights of air property. We also want to talk about culture, health, food, education, music, and politics. Our goal is to make this very interactive show, so we want you to send your questions in to Instagram at Footprint Farms, Facebook Footprint Farms, or our website, footprintfarmsms.com. Or you can reach us at our farm number, which is 601 9105534 and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel Footprint Farms MS. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. Today I'm so excited to be here because we're going to be talking trees, not just any trees, the trees that's best to grow right here in our community. So, if you want to know about plants, I can help you. If you know want to know about trees, this is one of the experts that's here with us today. Orlando, please introduce yourself and tell us. Tell us what you do, who you're with, and how we can make this world better with trees. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sidney. Uh, my name is Orlando Ellaby. I'm a underserved outreach forester with the Mississippi Forestry Commission. Uh, the Mississippi Forest Commission was founded in 1926. Uh, we had a task in hand to protect the state. 19.2 million acres against a wildfire. Also, we uh, manage the 16 section school trust land, uh, and also we provide healthy information uh, to our public. Uh, speaking of trees, uh, <clears throat> uh, being a forest uh, landowner myself, uh, we uh, get with certain tasks. Um, if you like trees, uh, the benefit of having trees, number one, uh, pertain to an economic value uh, wildlife habitat, and also recreation. Um, by, by the saying that, uh, a timber landowner and a landowner itself gets started by um, basically um, taking land um, that may be been abandoned, a uh, model was a parcel land, or they model recently had cleared some land and want to replant. And so this is where planting trees come in at as a whole. Um, when you plant trees, you talk about acres, um, the number of acres, that's one aspect to planting trees. Uh, we like to, generally in Mississippi, like to plant uh, pine trees, which there are several pine trees involved, which is lot lolly pine, short leaf, and long leaf, um, just to name a few. And also on the hardwood side, we like to plant white oak, wild oak, sometimes willow oak, um, and shumar, and nut our oak. Uh, for our wildlife habitat. You know, our oak species are really a high quality uh, species, um, but it depends on a forest land on desire. Um, also, when you're talking about acres we, and trees planting, uh, we normally like to plant 500 to 550 trees uh, to one acre. So wait a minute now, so one acre, for one acre of land, mm -hmm. we, need to, we could plant how many trees? Between 500 and 550 trees and to the acre. Is there a certain way we plant this, Orlando? Yes, it is. Uh, you plant those trees by putting them in a row. Uh, most of the time you use a spade, shovel, or a devil bar to create a hole in the ground and uh, you put the roots in the ground, which majority of the seedlings that we plant are containerized containerized seedling that has a root already established versus bare root. You can plant bare root seedling, but uh, survival rates are a lot better when you plant containerized. So make sure I'm listening right. So the trees that we get, if it's lolly pine or others, then we need to have the one that has the root on it, already rooted, which would be easier and more likely to uh, take heed with the earth and grow. Right, yes, you're exactly correct. Uh, it has been shown, uh, we go back one year, and we inspect the planting job um, 
there's about a 90% survival rate on the containerized. So tell me, how far apart do we do this? I mean, we got a straight line that's going down, so how many feet apart do we um, do our next plant, our next seedling? Right, usually um, traditional plant, um, a 10 by 10 uh, spacing. So that's 10, 10 feet? foot rows, 10, 10 foot between trees. Okay. Yeah. So a 10 by 10 will kind of give you that 550 trees. Oh, right? I see. Yeah, okay. Five. So it's 10 feet on mm -hmm. each side of me. Yeah, 10 feet. So my rows will be 10 feet apart, row here, 10 feet, row here, straight up, 10 feet each way. And right, that'll give right. time for it to grow and have room to Roll spread to grow out. Room to grow and span. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but um, traditional planning, uh, how you get started is um, uh, you contact your state um, forestry commission office or you can hire a um, private consultant that's a, a registered forester to kind of um, help you with choosing the right species that match your site. Um, you know, Mississippi is about 45% pine and about 40% hardwood. Um, and then we have about 15% that's mixed with, you know, majority of oaks and different other species. I'm talking about forest land For only. forest yeah. land. This is forest lands only. Mm -hmm. So again, at least on one acre, we can go up many acres as we would like, but at least one acre, there's 500 trees per acre. So which tree for us? We're in Mississippi and we're going to be planting all over um, the state and some we would have acreage. Um, people are, they have acres, they can do more. And some we have less space. We're going to talk about the more acres right now. So if I have five acres and it's just sitting dormant now, uh, it was a pastor. I can use that land too to plant trees. Right. Yes, you can. You use that land to plant trees. And uh, in my line of work, most of the time, you know, as uh, landowners quit farming, may have some cattle, a um, model did some row cropping, and they decided that they don't want to farm anymore. They want to do something different. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, they would uh, plant trees. And uh, you know, typically in Mississippi, a lot of landowners plant pine trees because they grow a lot faster. Uh, you're talking about 15 to 18 years on having your first harvest, uh, and then your second harvest probably age 24, uh, your final harvest probably age 35 on your pine. But on your oak tree, it takes a little bit longer, um, you know, for them to mature. So we can actually start planting now, we know it's going to be for our next generation and generation after that. But tell me, by planting these trees, how are we helping our environment? What are we? How is that going to help us with Climate Smart or um, to help us clean the air with carbon? Tell us the importance of trees. Well, the importance of it is the first thing: uh, trees fill out our oxygen, right? Uh, they also have a root system that stabilizes our soils. In Mississippi, some of the hills we have a lot of some type of erosion, so a lot of time we plant trees to kind of help eliminate that. Now, if you just typically like to walk into the woods, um, maybe do some hunting, fishing, you know, um, uh, for us that that nature go, there's a healthy benefit towards that as well. Of course, yeah. it's the the air you're breathing, yeah, you're being breathing. out in the open. Uh, but if we're looking again for for profit, we need to have more than one acre of trees, but we're still looking at a minimum of 34 years before we really get the whole return. Right, the whole rate of return is about 35 years. Yeah, but you'll see a little money at age 15 to 18, the little money at age 24 or 25. But it all depends on the landowner objective mm -hmm. um, as to when they want to cut and thin their timber. So when I plant this one acre, we don't we don't go back and harvest them all at one time. We'll may get some at year 15 and then we'll we'll replant. Will we, when we harvest, do we replant right then and there? Well, when you do your final harvest. When uh -huh. you do your final harvest, you replant. Uh, generally, uh, after you do your final harvest, uh, you'll let the land lay for about six months to a year because after the harvest, um, a standard timber, you leave behind debris. And you give that debris time enough to rot and decay to be able to bring in more fresh trees. Um, that nature. So yeah. we let it decay and go back to the earth pretty yeah, much. Yeah, go back to the earth. And that puts soil. more nutrients back in to fertilize the soil. So when we go back to replant after that 35 years. Right, right, right. And uh, how you replant, like working for the Mississippi Fall Commission, we have a program that help landowners um, reforest their acres once they have clear cut it. Uh, that program is called Forest Resource Development Program. Uh, is a max of $10,000. Uh, you had to have 10 acres to uh, qualify 
uh, for the program. And also you had to produce a copy of your deed or a tax receipt and uh, fill out an application. Mm -hmm. So then we're gonna put all this up on our website so people can go and research this and find out more information on these trees and what we need to do. But right now, again, we're talking about the volume of trees and the health of trees. But for you who's listening, you says, well, I don't have that much land. We're gonna talk about that too. But right now we're still gonna talk more with Orlando and he's gonna tell us the benefits of taking an acre or two acres that we might have just sitting dormant to actually look at planting them in trees versus just let them sit there or sit open so we can actually do something to help the earth by planting the trees. Yeah, yeah. Um, tree planting um, in a one acre or two acre setting, um, let's take for example, um, it has been shown that sometimes you can plant trees and also you can plant uh, shade and tire plants underneath as a cover crop mm -hmm. underneath. So that's, you know, you utilize your land for trees, but you're also doing something else. And like, come to mind, if you got one acre or two acre, and you live in the south part of the state, like South Mississippi, mm -hmm. you possibly can plant long leaf pine and start you a uh, pine leaf orchard where people would come and as a, another income, they'll bail your pine straw and we oh, use your pine straw in the moss beds and things like that. You make and sell that to the local, um, you know, uh, landscaping co -op. company, landscaping co-op, co-op, co yeah. Uh, and just right. So, mm -hmm. how how long would it take for them to grow to actually do the pine straw? Well, on the long leaf pine, actually, um, about six years or so of growth, they'll start shedding their, their needles. So yeah. we can actually, what you're saying, mm -hmm. we can actually plant two types of. Uh, trees or mm -hmm. plants at the same mm -hmm. time. And they one grow yeah. the pines and others straw. Yeah. So that way we actually got two things. We got a value added yeah, right there. Value added. Yes, you're exactly right. And at the same time, it's still holding the moisture in the soil for everything to still grow. Still filling out the air, still cleaning up, stabilizing the soil. Still also when it rains, you know, water hits the leaves and it goes down to the soil and into the tap water, so they're kind of filtering in the water too. It's cleaning the, tree. the trees are cleaning everything coming yeah. in. What about all this pollen we got right now? We get a lot of <laughs> pollen off the tree. They, they just something they perform. You know, they, uh, it's a little, to me, it's a little early this year, but uh, it's coming. It's coming heavy. It's yeah. coming heavy. Mm -hmm. So now, um, so again, we can do more than just have your land sitting idle. You can actually do things with it by planting trees. And by planting trees, not only are we going to help the earth and the carbon, we also can look at this as a money maker for years to come. It's a great legacy to leave for your grandchildren, your great grandchildren to have some other type of economic stimuli from this, these trees and this land. So instead of just letting it sit bare, uh, we can look at planting trees. And again, this is about planting acres and looking at a companion plant that we can also plant with that. But that helps us to clean air. Yeah. It also helps us for long range planning for the next generation to have clean air and clean water right. filters, but also looking at how we can keep our land from eroding right. by putting those trees in there. Right. And just to throw some numbers out there, um, we we kind of keep up with the numbers, but here in Mississippi, $12.79 billion goes in our forest and forest products. This uh, business uh, employs about 70,000 people. So there's a lot of people in Mississippi that works in the forest industry yeah, as a whole. And is there need for more? Can we get our students to be looking at forestry as a career? Yeah, there's need for more. Um, there's a lot of jobs that are going to come over within the next five years or so. Um, uh, a lot of um, people are considered retiring, and uh, we need more students uh, to pursue a career in natural resource. So we can. Science. So when you get ready to look at your careers and going to the universities, we should look at what degrees in forestry, or is it in well development? Which which way? Orlando? It's forestry. Um, we got forest. Um, we got urban. Uh, we have wildlife um, option. We have a total natural resource degree. Uh, we have uh, soil scientists. Uh, there's very, I can go on and on and on and I can tie it all the way to agriculture, and to natural agriculture. resources. Right so, right. so many opportunities we can look to do yeah. and still take care of the earth at the right. same time. Well, this has been exciting times. I know that we have some other guests that we're gonna be talking about um, urban 
forestry where we are. Don't right. worry about the sound. Uh, we will bring others on. But Orlando, we want to thank you for coming and sharing this information with us. We want you to come back to follow up because we're getting ready to plant a lot of trees throughout this country, and especially right here in Mississippi. And we want to make sure that we are planting correctly because we don't know how. So we're turning to the experts. So is it okay if, if we put your number up and your name, the emails that, well, not the emails, the, the information channels so they can go through and pull more information out? Yes, it's okay. Great. Uh, yeah. And also you can visit our website at www.mlc.ms.gov. Well, we're running out of time with this segment, but we're going to come back and see you soon. Thank you for watching Ag and Culture. We'll be right back. Thank you, Orlando. Thank you. Heifer USA is a nonprofit that supports small scale sustainable livestock businesses. And we are currently seeking individuals interested in pastured pork production in the state of Mississippi. Applicants should have access to at least 35 acres of land and be willing to participate in in depth training, both online and in person, at Heifer Ranch in Perryville, Arkansas. To learn about our operation, check out the Pastured Pigs playlist on the Heifer USA YouTube channel or contact Farmer engagement specialist Ruth Canada at 501-391-5511. Footprint Farms is a beautiful 68-acre vegetable and cattle farm located in Jackson, Mississippi, and is Mississippi's largest urban farm. The mission of Footprint Farms is to provide the community access to healthy food choices, introduce our youth to agriculture, and provide training and technical assistance to small farmers and ranchers. The farm is open to the public every Friday from 2.30 to 5.30 p.m. to purchase fresh produce or visit us at the Mississippi Farmers Market located near the fairgrounds. We accept all forms of payment, including EBT and SNAP benefits. Looking for a beautiful venue for your next wedding, family reunion, or dinner? Footprint Farms offers a 3,000 square foot facility on five beautiful acres, perfect for your next event. For more information, visit our website at footprintfarms.com, Facebook and Instagram at Footprint Farms, or call us at 601-910-5534. Footprint Farms, farm fresh, city sweet. Welcome to the JMMF's Culinary Kitchen in partnership with Footprint Farms, the Farmer's Hands Markets, and funded in part by the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, sponsored by Humana. I am Chef Shishi, the owner of Just In Time, the featured chef of the JMMF Culinary Kitchen, where we prepare farm-to-fork-centered, healthier, all-natural foods in the urban community. Our menu includes salads made from collards, kale, and spring mix varieties, fresh vegetarian soups, and fresh juice elixirs made daily. We're open Tuesday through Friday from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. And remember, what you put in your body is just as important as what you put on your body. We look forward to seeing you soon. Welcome back to Ag Plus Culture. Today we're talking about something that's very dear to my heart and that's taking care of the environment. We're gonna talk about trees. We just finished with Orlando and he did a great job in telling us about acres of trees. But now we're gonna talk back with Mitzi who I'm so happy to have her here. Now is girl power. We're finna put, them, <laughs> put the guys to shame. We're gonna talk about urban and how important it is to plant trees in urban, where to plant and how to plant. But Missy, thank you for being here with us, with us in Ag Plus Culture. Tell us about you, tell us what you do and how we can work together to make this thing great. Well, thank you, Dr. Cindy. Um, yes, my name's Misty Booth and I'm the Urban and Community Forestry Coordinator at the Mississippi Forestry Commission. And 
I, I know you were talking to Orlando about forestry and, and particularly uh, forest land management, you know, where you have, as you said, multiple acres perhaps, where you're planting several trees per acre. And truly that's when people think of forestry, that's what they think of. They think of the rural landscape of oftentimes and, and multiple trees and a forest. Mm -hmm. But so when you say urban and community forestry, it's almost like the two don't go together. You can't, you don't have forestry in a developed space, right? Well, actually it, it is more tree centric. You're thinking about that individual tree, mm -hmm. uh, more focused on it than perhaps you are um, in a stand of trees. But uh, urban forestry does deal with uh, the entire forest across the urban landscape. So um, in, in the case of a city, you know, an urban forester would be thinking about that tree canopy across the city. And are, you know, are, are there openings, are there hot spots where you don't have canopy and you don't have shade or those sort of things. So that, that's the difference is it's more tree centric but there are a lot of similarities in that you still manage uh, those trees across the landscape. So, um, and in Mississippi, we, we like to put the word community in there because when you say urban in Mississippi, people are like, well, that's New York City New or York something. City. Yeah, some big place. We don't have urban spaces here. But, so we, we say urban and community forestry, but Really what you're talking about is the management of trees where we live, work, and play. Any place that is developed. And so that might be your one acre plot in, or, or lot in, in a city, you know, where you have two or three trees. That may be your personal forest on your land. Or it could be uh, a 10 acre park in the city of Jackson or something like that where where you're, you have a little bit more sizable space. But when you put all of that together, the publicly owned trees, the privately owned trees across the city, um, that's your urban forest in that city. Okay, Mrs. So, so tell me, all right, we're, we're in the city. We know we're city girls. And I never planted anything other than maybe some flowers. I'm a farmer, I planted a lot. <laughs> but this is for all my other sisters who's only planted flowers. Mm -hmm. What, what do we do? I mean, we live in a city, we have smaller lots, uh, we have some backyards. Well, how do, we handle, how do we handle planting trees where we are? Or should we go in and I think we should talk with our city officials to see what we can plant, what public land is available to plant? Give us some directions on which way we should go if we're looking to plant some trees, again, to help the environment. What do we do if we live in a city? Well. If you live in a city, you are a resident of that city, and and so you, we would encourage you to look for partnership opportunities to to better your city. Mm -hmm. So our program is about that. Um, really, tree planting is the first step of urban forest management. It's just the beginning, and I know tree planting is a lot is a very popular uh, activity in, in forest management, but it's just the first step. So our program actually deals uh, with the maintenance and care of trees and the management of them more so than even the planting because planting is just part of it's that part cycle. Of so um, so I would say like our program, our stakeholders would be municipalities first and foremost, um, but we, we work with uh, professionals in the field, volunteers, um, and really our program has uh, we offer assistance, both technical assistance and then also financial assistance through grant programs. So we're really about increasing the capacity of that community to manage their trees. And that really has a, a lot to do with staff mm -hmm. um, in the city, your uh, local ordinance perhaps. Does your city have a tree care ordinance mm -hmm. or not? Um, that gives uh, you know some backing of law to, the, to your efforts. Um, we work with advisory groups. So does your city have a tree board that's a community-led tree board that, that helps advise um, the city uh, employees and, and, and their department? And then also uh, planning, anything that goes into management planning. Does, does the city need an inventory or some sort of a canopy assessment? So I think as a resident um, in a city, not only looking for places where you can help volunteer 
to move the city forward, but then also advocating for those types of things to make the programs and the care of trees in your community a more sustainable effort. Well, it makes so much sense. And what we want to do and what we're looking to do more of is to partner, to come in to bring what we have, which are bodies and hands and hands who want to work to help make a difference um, around this country as relates to the air and the water and the land. So what we're looking to do is to come in and do just that partnership. And you're gonna tell us and we're gonna put on the site the different places we can go to. Because we got about 5,000 volunteers that's around uh, that's ready to do some things right now in Mississippi, if well, not more. Yeah, and when it comes to tree planting uh, in, in the urban environment, we think of Arbor Day as one time every, uh, every year that we celebrate trees and plant trees. So now would be a great time for your viewers to be thinking about Arbor Day for next year. And that's actually, we are the liaison with the Arbor Day Foundation mm -hmm. in Mississippi and administer their recognition programs like Tree City USA, Tree Campus USA. Um, so that as part of those programs, municipalities have to have an Arbor Day celebration ah. and a pro proclamation and they have to have a tree board. So these are places that your uh, viewers could possibly plug in and say, hey, let's think about our trees that we want to plant this time next year, you know, in, in February around Mississippi Arbor Day, um, which is in February in Mississippi, by the way, it's the second Friday in February. Um, you know, you want to look for those trees in the fall and be thinking about that so you can plant in February and um, having an event and bringing awareness to trees and the benefits they provide. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in an urban space, um, they provide so much more. I, I think I said that about people think of trees as as pretty or uh, we, we want to make this avenue prettier and they are aesthetically pleasing, but they're also providing environmental benefits like stormwater mitigation. You know, if, if, when you have trees there, they help you manage the stormwater runoff. Um, economic benefits and services from trees um, such as increased property values, mm -hmm. um, Cooling your home lowers your utility your utility bills. bill. Yeah. So there's that economic benefit, but there's also the social benefit of of being less stressed when you're when you have tree canopy and yes. and um, it's been shown in research that children actually have higher test scores when they have access to green space and uh, uh, when you have healthy tree. Now this is let me premise that it's healthy tree cover. When well managed trees optimize these benefits and um, and, and so that's part of it. You have to have the management to optimize the benefits and, and, and managing trees as assets because if they're not managed, they can present liabilities and, for and you. And major problems. So mm -hmm. what you're saying, and I think it's so important to understand you need to have a plan mm -hmm. on where you're gonna plant them. But first of all, for the partnership, let's go and talk with the city or the counties that actually could have and should have and probably do have a program for the urban forestry or community forestry that we can partner with and to learn how we can bring our services to help the community even more so. So we just don't wanna go and put a tree anywhere. You don't wanna just say, I'm gonna plant a tree here, not knowing, first of all, is it uh, interfering with the utilities? Is it in the wrong place? Is it a wrong type tree? Mm -hmm. So all this is important, so that the planning has to happen. And you said something important, February is the month for planning for um, before our, for our Arbor Day. But now tell me, so if we get ready now for next year, can we do anything this fall for planning with the temperature wise for that or should we just wait to get everything ready for February? Um, and I think Alex is gonna talk to you about the mechanics of the best time to okay. plan and yeah, everything. We'll, we'll put Alex. So, so I don't wanna steal his thunder. Okay. But um, I would say, uh, uh, organizing really, you know, is between now and 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 this late this fall, getting your volunteers together, getting your trees um, ordered, uh, finding those partnerships and nurturing that and planning is what you need to do before you go stick the tree in the ground and and um, you know and that's what our why our program is here. If you need an advocate, if you need someone to help you get these conversations started, that's part of what we do. So, um, you know, and sometimes we have to convince people who aren't tree people that they're looking at trees all wrong. I, I would love to change the culture around trees and the way people view trees. And, mm -hmm. and in a city, you know, a lot of times 
people understand you need to manage your gray infrastructure like roads and uh, sewer systems and your water system and your electric grid and all of the other gray infrastructure that you have. But they think of trees as an afterthought. Mm -hmm. And I think whenever you can change your, your viewpoint and think of trees as green infrastructure that need to be managed and you need to be intentional about those, those green spaces and your trees, that's when you really start having them work for you. And, and, and planting the, is the first part of that. Yep. But planting is only the first part. That's the right. The other part of that is to, you have to make sure that it's in the right place uh, at the right time, doing the right things in order to for it to grow and not just be a nuisance, but to be an access. And yes. you said something we need to look at that. And it's truly is an access to us to for the clean air. Mm -hmm. uh, the canopy, like you said, for so many economic purposes other than just being pretty. That's so we right. have to look at trees in a whole different light right now. Right. So right now with this climate change and everybody's talking climate smart and doing different things, as a, a city girl, again, not doing um, a lot about planning anything, one of the best things we can do is to volunteer with an organization that's already in the business or have experience in planting trees? Um, I think that gives you a head start if you've got somebody, but uh, honestly, there are not a lot of tree planting nonprofits in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't want to discourage anyone that's starting from ground zero. That's part of, um, of our program too, is nonprofit support. So in, Really, at the end of the day, what we do is try to increase the capacity for a local community to manage and you know, grow and manage trees to optimize those benefits we were talking about. So sometimes it's not the city that leads the way. Sometimes ah. it is the community-based grassroots effort kind of thing. And, and that happens a lot in Mississippi because a lot of our communities are small. You, you don't have a lot of larger cities that will ever be able to have a city arborist as a mm -hmm. single uh, position. Um, so it, it really, that volunteer effort and the community-based um, activity and, and advocacy is important for cities in Mississippi to accomplish um, good urban forestry programs. So you have some great websites for us to go and to look at. And of course, we can reach back out to you when we do the next step of actually, before we dig anything, before <laughs> we plant anything, we want to make sure that we're doing it the correct way and the right way and to do Absolutely. it right the first time. But we're excited about this new venture of helping to take care of the environment, um, to put our trees down and to plant our roots. But it's important, like you said, to do more than just put a tree down. It's more than just that. It's a whole process in order to make it successful and to continue to do what it needs to do. It's cleaning the air, mm -hmm. uh, helping us breathe better, You know, not just beautification. Uh, have, helping economics for you, utility bills to be lower, or just in nature in general to be able to feel and to smell and to think just by having an opportunity to be in open land under the treetop or under the trees to do so. Mm -hmm. And we're not just talking fruit trees, which is something we can talk about as well, but we're talking about which trees is better for the location in the cities where we are. So give us that website before we... Uh, and uh, we will we will post all of this, so we'll have all of it on. <laughs> but if you can remember, we can just start. With, which is the two sites we need to look at? Well, first. Um, as Orlando mentioned, our our website msforestry.com. When you get there, you can go to Urban and Community Forestry Program to find out more. Um, I would encourage you to go to the Arbor Day Foundation's website, which is arborday.org. And we didn't talk a lot about the health, human health benefits of having healthy trees, but healthy trees, healthy lives.org. Talk, dives into that too. So um, I would encourage you to go there as well. So we have three great places from, from you that we can go and research even more, but we wanna bring you back as well. We want to have the ladies ready with uh, speak in hand and the trees and say, which way we go, head us this way. Uh, but we wanna make sure again, that we're bringing in an asset that we want to uh, help the community do more with. So trees are important. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for all your information. And we're going to hear more from Ag Plus Culture, Talking Trees and Forestry. It's coming soon. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having us. Yeah. We really appreciate it. Heifer USA is a nonprofit that supports small scale sustainable livestock businesses. And we are currently seeking individuals interested in pastured pork production in the state of Mississippi. 
applicants should have access to at least 35 acres of land and be willing to participate in in-depth training, both online and in person at Heifer Ranch in Perryville, Arkansas. To learn about our operation, check out the Pastured Pigs playlist on the Heifer USA YouTube channel or contact Farmer Engagement Specialist Ruth Canada at 501-391-5511. Footprint Farms is a beautiful 68-acre vegetable and cattle farm located in Jackson, Mississippi, and is Mississippi's largest urban farm. The mission of Footprint Farms is to provide the community access to healthy food choices, introduce our youth to agriculture, and provide training and technical assistance to small farmers and ranchers. The farm is open to the public every Friday from 2.30 to 5.30 p.m. to purchase fresh produce or visit us at the Mississippi Farmers Market located near the fairgrounds. We accept all forms of payment, including EBT and SNAP benefits. Looking for a beautiful venue for your next wedding, family reunion, or dinner? Footprint Farms offers a 3,000 square foot facility on five beautiful acres, perfect for your next event. For more information, visit our website at footprintfarms.com, Facebook and Instagram at Footprint Farms, or call us at 601-910-5534. Footprint Farms, farm fresh, city sweet. Welcome to the JMMF's Culinary Kitchen in partnership with Footprint Farms, the Farmer's Hands Markets, and funded in part by the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, sponsored by Humana. I am Chef Shishi, the owner of Just In Time, the featured chef of the JMMF Culinary Kitchen, where we prepare farm-to-fork-centered, healthier, all-natural foods in the urban community. Our menu includes salads made from collards, kale, and spring mix varieties, fresh vegetarian soups, and fresh juice elixirs made daily. We're open Tuesday through Friday from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. And remember, what you put in your body is just as important as what you put on your body. We look forward to seeing you soon. Welcome back to Ag Plus Culture. Today, I'm so excited. We're talking about something that's magic, and that's trees. We've talked about the generality of trees on acreage. We just got through talking about urban uh, canopies and community growing. Now, we're going to talk about this third leg of this tree, or how deep this root will go. So come on. I got some great guests. Alex is here with me. And what he's going to tell us is more information we need to know on how to. So Alec, thank you for being with Ag and Culture, for being with us. Now, here you go. Tell us, what do we need to do and how do we need to do it? All right, all right. I, can do, I can definitely do that. Uh, so as Dr. Ayer stated, I'm Alex Ballard. I'm with the Mississippi Forestry Commission. I'm the uh, partnership coordinator for the Urban and Community Forestry Program. And let's talk trees. Let's talk trees. Um, so when you're talking about planting a tree, you, you, the first thing you're gonna do is, is when to plant it. You gotta know when to plant. So we recommend that you plant in the dormant season, which is when the leaves fall off the trees. Um, at this point, the tree shuts down and it no longer has to use nutrients and water to put the leaves out. So that's the best time to plant a tree. Uh, a lot of times they go through transplant shock. So when you take a tree from a nursery and put it in the ground, it has to recover from that. So if you do this during the dormant season, they're not struggling to get the nutrients and everything they need. Another thing about this is when you do plant this tree in the dormant season, the roots continue to grow. So it gives that tree a, an opportunity to grow its roots instead of its limbs and its leaves while it's dormant. Okay, now, Alec, now dormant. So for us in Mississippi, then we're talking about the fall. When do we look at everything's dormant and when all the leaves are gone? So that's mm -hmm. usually October, November, when everything starts falling or? Right, so, so Mississippi doesn't have much of a dormant season anymore down here in the south. So, so we like to plant trees around November 
to like March 1st. You don't really want to plant much after that because these trees, as you can see now, uh, mm. it, it, that we're well into spring and everything's, you know, they're blooming and they're flushing out, the buds are busting. So it's, it's happening already, so. So we're getting ready um, to do our research to find out where we're going to plant. Now we know when, so the wind would be during the dormant season, so when in the in the fall or in the winter, so in we're the fall or winter, so starting with November. Mm -hmm. So November, December, January, February, March. You want to stop at March. Stop at March. That's okay. right. That's All right. right. All but right. Yeah. So you get about four months to plant some trees, and and we're usually pretty busy around that time because we plan everything and then plant when it's cold. All right. So now we know when. Mm -hmm. Now where? I mean, how do we know where we're going to? I know we talked about this earlier inside the cities and partnership with the cities and everything. Mm -hmm. But what kind of trees should we be looking at if we're in an urban area? Okay, so so when we're talking where, um, the, the big initiative that we push now is, is right tree, right place. You don't wanna plant a tree that's not good in wet soils in a, in a wet area. So that's the wrong tree for the, for the wrong place. So you can look at it in two different ways. You can buy the tree that you want and you have to take what it likes and put it in, a, in an area that it likes or you can have the area, say your front yard, and you have to check, you can get a soil sampler, however it may be. You gotta find a tree that likes that area. So definitely you wanna go native most of the times than not. If you're going to a tree nursery, I always say shop local, because if they grew it there in the nursery, it'll probably grow in your front yard if you're very close to it. Um, uh, one of the biggest things you have to look for as far as front yard tree planting or uh, in municipalities, you're gonna wanna look up and you're gonna wanna call 811 and find out where those utilities are. You gotta know underground and you have to know above ground. Mm -hmm. And you don't look at the tree in this container and look up and look down. You need to envision what that tree's gonna look like in 80 years at its mature size. So you might say, hey, this tree's only 10 foot tall. We'll put it right under this light pole. No, don't do that. You're gonna wanna know what that tree is at mature size and you're gonna wanna plan space accordingly for it. Uh, this goes the same way about structures. You don't wanna put a big, you know, giant canopy tree right next to your house because that you know you're going to have intruding roots and branches and everything else you'll be fighting with forever against the side of your house yeah the water systems that's underneath and mm -hmm. the roof itself so then we're looking urban look native go and talk to your nursery or looking at what's native for our area mm -hmm. and we need again to do a soil test or to see what type of soil we have which will decide on what trees like what well, it, it can get, decide things. Um, it, some trees like more acidic soil and some like more alkaline soil. Um, an example is like a dogwood. Uh, a dogwood is not made for full sun. And there's so many people that go out and buy a dogwood and they put it right out in the full sun and it looks stressed its entire life. It doesn't grow fast, it doesn't bloom right, and they can develop anthracnose, which is a disease that they get that kills mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So if you simply take this dogwood tree and put it in a partial shade area or plant it under another That's canopy, right it's fine, it's happy, it's enjoying life. So it's just, it's right tree, right place. You have to know what's going on when you do it. So that's important. So again, let's talk native and let's talk about backyards, front yards. So if I have a backyard, we already got some trees up, yet they're at a distance. So we look at putting more trees back there or should we just look at what we have and start working with them? Um, you, have, you, you have to plan for that succession. So you have to look at your biggest tree and, and, and if it's in good health, Plant, just plant trees under it. You don't need another just overarching giant canopy tree back there if there's not space. If there is a good tree back there, you can plant smaller trees under it, something that is shade tolerant and can grow in the shade a little bit. And that, that's that's the fun ones. That's the ones with like the color and all that. That's the ones you're gonna like. Oh, the pretty ones. You get your shade from the big giant tree and then you get the pretty ones underneath it. Ah, so again, it can grow, compare, we can have a comparison with, here's tall, plant something else that won't get as tall, but right. it's under this canopy, so we're still getting something that's going to keep close clean air. Right, right. So it's, it's, it's called the forest stratum. And, uh -huh. and you, you have, you have a, an understory tree, a midstory tree, and an overstory tree. So you can have use three stages of it, three levels. And if you do it right, that's your succession trees as well. And if you plant overstory trees while the other tree's still there, you know, when it goes down, the other one's ready to take its place. Hmm. So that's smart planning. Oh yeah. Absolutely to do that. So we know when Orlando talked to us, we talked about 10 feet uh, a wide, 10 feet long, the rows, but you know, we got less space in urban. How do we plant inside? Uh, what space is needed for planting the trees or even the companion trees? How far apart do we put them? Uh, in a sense of a city, you put them in the little parking lot cutouts wherever they put them. <laughs> but anyways, if you want to get technical with it, an overstory tree is going to be about 50 foot apart. 
uh, before you plant your next one, like a big oak tree. You're gonna want a 50 foot spacing between it and the next tree. Um, and then a medium sized tree, which is gonna be something like a red maple. Um, you're gonna want about 30 feet in between each one of those. And then a smaller tree like a crepe myrtle or a drake elm or something like that, 10 foot's good on those. Mm -hmm. Or like an evergreen tree, Christmas mm -hmm. tree. Christmas tree, evergreen. Yeah. All right, so it, it is important on the spacing because some of the trees are getting tall, wide. So we're looking at more, um, instead of height, more width mm -hmm. for the trees to grow. That's so right. So we're looking for more space we need to, to grow in versus going up. Right. We need to look outwards. We want that shade. We want the shade. That's right. Shade is important. It's we're shade. not looking at them as a dollar sign. We're looking at those at those benefits you get other than the, the meal you could carry them to. So then that means we're going to have uh, more, less sunlight burning us so we fight skin cancer That's more right. by being covered out of direct sun. Uh, we're still looking at these trees as to help still clean the air mm -hmm. and the carbon and everything else because, again, carbon is a big thing. Yeah? yeah, they store a lot of carbon. They also store a lot of water. So so not only are they cleaning the air, that they deal with a lot of stormwater issues as well. So if you put them in a, in a, in a wetter area or in some cities, it helps deal with a lot of their stormwater drainage because so they soak it up and hold they it. They soak it up and hold it. So we've been talking partnerships. So where should we should be looking to go to our next level? Again, we have a lot of, uh, a lot of volunteers. Um, mm -hmm. We have a mission to plant trees for the next four, four years so that we can help with the, the, this carbon restoration as well as to beautify. But more than that, to help with um, the wildlife, to make sure that they have places for that, that makes it our environmental safe. That's right. So tell us more. So who are the partners? Who are, are the partners? Who are the partners? We are the partners, me and you right here. Right here. Um, you got a volunteer base and I can I can talk to them all day about planting trees. So, you know, any any information they ever needed, I, I'm here to help with it. And then we can find our locations. We can let you know if this, you can yes, tell if, us. If you want to, um, if, if you're planting in a, in a city environment or an urban environment, you're going to want to check with the local municipality on, on what is public space and what's not public space. Mm -hmm. um, and if it is public space, you've got to get clearance for that too. So just always check your check your uh, bounds there and just make sure that, that you have, um, so I guess, legality to plant there. Yeah, you want to make sure that you're checking in with the, the municipalities mm -hmm. or the counties to see what, if they even have land that's available to plant on. Correct. Um, they would probably encourage you to do that. But then let's talk about the, the type of trees. Again, we talked about native trees and if you're in your backyard. But suppose we're in a park and we're, mm -hmm. this is a park area. Should we be looking for the same three types of tier trees to plant when mm -hmm. we do that? You want to see that everywhere. For, for one, if I'm going to that park, I want shade. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at big oak trees. Uh, my favorite is the willow oak. Um, you see a lot of water oaks around, uh, but, but structurally a willow oak is a better tree. They're very similar, but a willow oak is just structurally better. Um, it'll last a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I like the oak trees. I, I, like a, I like a lot of different trees. You wouldn't believe a bald cypress is actually really good for an urban environment. Um, people ask me about the cypress knees all the time, um, and I, I say don't worry about it. If it's in a city, you're not going to have those cypress knees. The only reason they pop up in the swamp is because they're, they're flooded. Those, those are roots that need air. So roots need 50% air, 50% water. So mm -hmm. if they don't have that air, they're coming up to get it. In, a, in an urban environment, they're not flooded out, so they don't put up the knees. Um, another good tree, uh, we, we do a lot of the, um, the maple trees. There's a Chinese elm. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily native, but it grows well in an urban environment. Um, there's, 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 I have a list. I got lots of them. So you got a list that we can actually look at. And yes. we can buy these trees or order these trees from through the forestry or the nurseries? How Just do we local do nurseries all, all over Mississippi. There's a lot. We, we actually don't have a nursery right now, but um, we do have some partnership programs through us. So we might can help out with some trees. So now partnership is so important for us. You know, we want, again, to not have to create or recreate, but to be able to step in and to help enhance. So with some of the programs that I've heard from Allison and from Orlando, we got a great avenue that we can start right now and getting information on to get ready for planting for this fall. Mm -hmm. So I can talk to you a little bit about how to plant. That's here. Is that what you want to hear? I want to know how all to right, plant All right, all right. So if I use my hands here, I'm sorry, but Please, I'm, I'm, talking to, I'm talking to process. Come on. All right. So um, when you plant a tree, you don't want to dig a cylindrical hole. The first thing is you want a hole two to three times bigger than the root ball itself. So if you get a tree in a container, you're going to want to dig that hole two to three times wider than that container is. Okay. And only as deep as that container is. You don't want to plant a tree too deep because this gets back to the water and the air that the roots need. So if you plant them too deep, they're going to suffocate. 
it's better to plant one inch above soil grade than one inch below soil grade. So always remember that. Um, so once you get your hole dug two to three times bigger than the root ball itself, mm -hmm. you want it to be shaped like a bowl. You want, you want the slope, sloping sides. You don't want it straight up and down. Mm. You want it to look like a bowl. Uh, once you get the hole dug, you're gonna take the tree. If it's in a plastic container, you're gonna wanna pull it out of that container. Uh, I've seen people plant in the containers, don't do that. No. Uh, once you get it out, uh, nowadays the, the roots in these containers are circled. Mm -hmm. They grow in a circle. They hit the wall of that container and they start growing sideways. Mm -hmm. um, if you take that out and put it straight in the hole, it will never anchor itself. You're gonna need to cut those. So take it, your spade or whatever, just to shovel, the bottom. saw, whatever it may be. If there's a root going, growing in a circle around there, you're going to want to cut that. So at some point it'll grow back so out. So it can grow down. Yeah, down, out. Out. So, so this is another thing. Uh, a lot of people oh. think roots grow down. Uh, they, they grow, grow out. out. Tree roots grow out oh. as far as the drip line of the tree. So if you see a big old canopy tree, the roots probably go out just as far as that canopy. Um, so yeah, most of your roots only exist in the top 18 inches of soil. So they don't really grow that deep. Um, so once you get it out, you get those roots cleaned up, um, you're gonna wanna put it in your hole, in the plant hole. So you keep it, you, you wanna check, make sure it's straight, you wanna make sure it's not too deep. Uh, at this point, this is where I also rake some of the soil off the top, because you wanna see that trunk flare. You don't want it to look straight down like a telephone pole. Mm -hmm. You wanna see it get wider at the bottom. You wanna see it taper. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times you'll see two or three lateral roots right there. I want those uncovered. If there's soil on top of those inside that pot, I want them uncovered. Mm. So um, you cover that part with mulch. So once you get it in the plant hole, everything's good. You've broken up your roots. You can see your lateral roots on the top. There's not too much soil. You got a good tree taper. Then you can start to backfill. This is when you put the dirt back the in. Same dirt I took out, I put back in. Yes, ma'am. The only recommendation I'll have there is take your shovel and break up those dirt clods. Mm -hmm. If it's loose dirt, it'll backfill a lot easier. There won't be as many air pockets that tree can't move around. So as you're backfilling, you're gonna wanna get the base um, packed down pretty good that'll hold the tree stable and keep it straight. And then the sides, you can have it loose dirt and you can pack it in just a little bit, not too tight, but pack it in good so the tree's not gonna move. Do I need to put water over it after I do this? Yes, ma'am, absolutely. So, so if you wanna uh, decrease some of those air pockets, you can water it in a little bit while you're backfilling, like backfill some, water, backfill some, and that'll mm -hmm. help eliminate that. But yes, after you plant your tree, please water it. Um, I recommend, so post planting, you got your tree there, everything's good. Um, I recommend five to seven gallons per caliper inch per week. Per so week. If, so if you, have, if you have a five inch tree, which is gonna be about this big around, mm -hmm. um, you're gonna wanna water it 20, 25 gallons a week. Uh, and that, that's the recommendation. That's to keep your tree- a lot of water. Yes, it does. They hold a lot of water. So, and this is like I said, to, to get them out of this transplant shock, they need it. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to help them out. It's like a child. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, once you get it planted, I do recommend mulch as well. Water your tree after you plant it and then put some mulch on top of it. We recommend two to three inches of mulch all the way out to the drip line if possible. Mm -hmm. So if just it's a younger just tree. Cover it, just cover it around. Right, and and the, the biggest thing I can say here is do not let that mulch touch the bark of that tree. You don't wanna pile it up. You've seen the volcano mulch that everyone does. You wanna take your fingers and just rake it back two or three inches away from the trunk of that tree. Okay. Well, listen, I can't believe our time is already up, and this is such an interesting topic. So now know for sure that we will be posting everything up so we can see the, the reference plate pages we need to go to, the websites to do that. We definitely will have all three of you back to uh, talk, hopefully even to a group that's live with us. But to start, we're going to start doing our homework right now, and and we want to partner. We want to be able to come in and to see what we can do differently. We're excited about this. We're so excited that you, both, all three, could come and spend the time with us today to share the information that's needed. Mm -hmm. We talk ag and culture, and we're talking about everything that's ag. And a big part of this is how do we take care of the earth by still utilizing what we need, and that's to breathe with the trees. Oh, that's right. So we're excited about the root and healthy trees, healthy people. That's right. Listen, you've been with us with Ag Plus Culture right here in Jackson, Mississippi, and we're looking at what we'll be able to do differently to help take care of our earth and environment. I'm Cindy Ayers Elliott. I'm your host of Ag Plus Culture, and I want to thank the forestry, the Mississippi forestry, for being with us and sharing their expertise. We'll be talking with you soon. Yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you, you for having so, us. Thank you so, so much for being with us. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.
It's season two of Ag and Culture. And of course, we are talking culture. Tune in for great guests and conversation, breaking down all things agriculture. Watch us on our YouTube channel, MS Footprint Farms, and on Facebook at Footprint Farms. Every Tuesday, 9 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Eastern, and 7 a.m. on the West. Proudly sponsored by Heifer USA. 